Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. The first thing he said, why these chairs don't raise? And, why and, these chairs so short? And what's Because you bought the chairs, That's Kevin. That's right. And every time somebody comes in and they try to raise the chairs up, the first thing I say is, well, Kevin Hart bought those chairs. He wants everybody to look short on like him. Yeah, I definitely uh, I fucked up. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know a better way to say it. He didn't I, remember he bought these chairs. No, he didn't. I didn't. He did though. I didn't. But now that I, now that I did, I'm gonna see if I can get you guys another set. Dude, well, thank, to... You, you so actually much. said. I remember you came in here one time and you was like, you know what? I should have did. I should put my name on the back of these chairs. Yeah, I'll do yes, that. I'll, I'll send. I'll send <laughs> another set. I'll send another set and put my name on the back. But I'll make sure they raise. What's going on, guys? Well, Kevin Hart, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I'm here, man, in the building. How are you, brother? I can't complain, brother. Drinking milk, getting tall. Same thing. I say every time. All right. No complain. No room for complaining. Life Life is amazing. Life is great. People are great. Room to love. Room to laugh. I'm in a good mood. So much on the table. You so much Netflix. So much Audible. Yes, so sir. much Chase Bank. Yes, sir. Like, like, where do we start? We start with True Story. Yes, we need to start with True Story. Okay. Dropping November 24th. Uh, for those who do not know, True Story is my new series that is about to drop on Netflix. Excited about it. Drama, thriller. Uh, this is me in a way that you haven't seen me before. By the way, I have baby walked you to this point. Um, the Upside, that was my first step in the dramatic space. And after mm -hmm. that, hit you with Fatherhood. That was a more uh, drastic view at me in the world of drama. And then now, now we're touching the world of drama and thrillers. So myself, Wesley Snipes, uh, Billy Zane, Theo Rossi. I mean, the cast is amazing. So many so many talented people. But um, this is the real deal. People are going to be blown away by this. What's True Story about? What is it about? True Story, um, True Story is about... It's a show that's wrapped around loyalty, trust, and uh, it, it it raises the question of how far would you go to protect the things that you worked hard for, right? Mm. Like, what is your limit as an individual, as a person? How far can you be pushed before you feel like you have to push back or take a, or take a stance of um, uncertainty, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're you're making decisions that you that you didn't know that you were capable of making. Um, it's loosely based off of the the template of my life, the backdrop, the comedian, the the mogul, uh, that's what the character is. But then it takes a shift into a, a darker world where you see that I'm not playing myself. Uh, the version of myself was just to get you interested. Mm -hmm. And then after you see, oh God, it's not Kevin, it's some other shit, it, uh, it takes a spin. But it's some, uh, it's some dope shit. It's the story of these two brothers and just, you know, a whirlwind of their relationship. The, uh, the, the the changing of the guard, you know, like when you got an older brother, younger brother, there's a there's kind of a thing where an older brother is in control yeah. and you know he's really much in charge of that relationship. But then this thing happens when the younger brother surpasses an older brother in life and success. Uh, there's a narrative and there's a feeling that comes with that, and that conflict sometimes uh, sometimes puts some real rocky water in that relationship. And in this case, that rocky water is uh, is is it's dark, it's some dark shit that happens between these guys. And, you know, their involvement, the relationship, and the whirlwind that it goes through, that's what the show does. It, made you, what made you do a drama? Like, what, 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 you wanted to challenge yourself? Or was you, do you think people only thought you were funny? No, I'm not challenging myself. I know I'm fucking talented. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about it's not about challenging me, man. I like because upside fact. was good. The upside was really good. Oh, thank you. The upside was really good. Why are you in here with shades on on some rock star what, shit? What have that... I ever not worn glasses? I always wear shades when you come here. Not all not. the time. Yes, he does. I've always worn early shades on. Here. I've always had on glasses. I, I always, always wear glasses. Okay. Stop trying to make it seem like I'm changing. <laughs> <laughs> you are though, and it's good. I've been changed. Now, if you just, right. <laughs> now, if you just said the furry cardigan, he's never had on a furry cardigan huh? up here. That's a little different. It's very casual. And he got on an emerald. Mm -hmm. That's how you know Cav getting money. Cav got he ain't got no diamond. Well, these diamonds around him. He got an emerald on. Said, these things are these are my signature chains. I've, I've been wearing these forever. They, I've they, never they seen you with an emerald on. Yeah, I mean, come on. What day have you seen me? There, there's different days. Did you wow. Get Did you get it from Zales? No. What? What is that? What else do you have out of the Lucky Charms box? I know you probably got every single oh, thing of diamonds. That's original. No, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about for real. The emeralds, the oh. green clovers. <laughs> Look, that's how you think everybody's attacking you. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's, that's fucking original. original. That's original. <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh, the, oh, good the one. The purple yeah. heart. <laughs> no, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I like the, I like the stone. So the emerald, the rubies, the sapphires, mm. the uh, pink diamonds, all that stuff. I like, I just like different shit. Dope, so, dope. But it's all like the signature heart with the K on it. Kev getting a different type of money. Yeah, I don't think y'all realize no, that. No, no, Kev, I know we talking down. about the I'm true like story the, and everything else, I'm but like the evolution this. of Kevin Hart over the past decade 
has been incredible. From, I'm just from growing up, man. From no, no, no. no from no. stand up comic mm, yeah. to the acting to now, you can't. You're just a mogul. I am like literally, you're, you're a mogul. I am very much in charge of my uh, my direction and my opportunity. I like the fact that I can control my narrative in the business and do the things that I want. So this uh, this ecosystem that now exists underneath the brand of Heartbeat oh. is one that produces television, film, you know, uh, radio, mm -hmm. literature, animation, you know, whether it be comedy, drama, it doesn't matter. It's all about what we feel is a great opportunity for us at this point, at this moment. So, you know, to his point when he said, why do you want to do drama? Why not? Why not go and, you know, develop something that's mm -hmm. just different, that's outside the box, that I can still find excitement in. I don't want to get bored with the business. I don't want to get bored with entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, I want to find excitement and showing up to work every day. So that comes with the, within the creative. I like being a part of that process. So uh, that's where I am. Now. Charlamagne, you might be right. What? I'm looking at the last uh, five interviews he did. He didn't have glasses. Two years ago, no glasses. Wait a minute. With Tiffany didn't have glasses on. I took them off in the Tiffany time interview. Hoodie, he didn't have a glasses. You gotta I go way back. Off. You gotta go way back to see him wear glasses. Years, he didn't have glasses on. He, he changed, yeah. he changed bet, a little bit. Bet on. money I can pull up right now that you're wrong, that I can go to two that are back to back while I had glasses on. Probably I bet from that 2011. I took them off. Tiffany's interview, I took them off because I got mad. You, okay. So I took the glasses off. Oh, okay. Maybe. The one before that, when I had on uh, the dark shades where I had on like brown, I had glasses on. I took them off at a certain point. When you guys get me hot, see, I do this shit. And that's another <laughs> oh, thing. That's what, see? <laughs> okay. Let's not distract okay. from all this money you're making. Because this I'm is. Like, why do you want here's the, like here's the next announcement that I think I we're going to hear. We're going to hear stuff. Heartbeat Productions has partnered with somebody for a billion plus dollars. The way we saw with Spring Hill and uh, Reese Witherspoon's company, I feel like that's going to happen for Kevin Hart. What? I feel, like now? I feel like that's none of your fucking business. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be in the trade. I'm like, well, you wait, you wait till it's in the trade. Uh, <laughs> you wait till you see that in the trade. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, look, man, listen, listen. Here's, here's, here's what I will tell you, okay? Um, there is a blueprint that's been given, um, and that blueprint has been given by Oprah, by Tyler, by Hove, uh, shout out to my brother Brian Mav over there at Spring mm -hmm. Hill. Mm -hmm. They're doing amazing things, man. But the blueprint is about ownership. The blueprint is about figuring out ways to uh, control a narrative based on IP, IP ownership. Um, we're not in this business to be work for hires forever. Um, you eventually want to be a partner. And what we're doing at our company, and I say our because I don't have employees, I have partners. Mm -hmm. I don't have people that work for me. I got people that work with me. So my team, we've uh, we've assembled an amazing foundation. And within that, the goal and desire is to have tentacles, have, have branches. And these branches provide opportunities, employment for so many, man. And, you know, I love the fact that we are a black-owned company that is all about equal opportunity. So when you look under my hood, you see men, women, you see everything. We are representation of what the business should look like and be, that equality, that movement, uh, that portfolio. It's one of opportunity and future success for the next version of stars. So those stars are entertainers. Those stars are execs. Those stars are uh, creatives. Those stars are heads of, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it, it it goes all across the board. I've made mine. I've I've gotten to where I've gotten this star not going to get no brighter. It's about figuring out ways to help the next version. That's what Heartbeat is. That's what we're about. So, you know, I can't answer that question. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, when, when it comes out of the trades, I'm going to say, I told you uh, so. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. So, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> does, Kev, does Kev slow down now? Because Kev, you, you, you're super successful. You got three kids. I see you. I got four you, kids. Four kids. You love hanging out Just with your babies. Just kill one of my babies off. You love Damn. taking to the kids. <laughs> Jesus you Christ. love doing yeah. things with your kids. Do you yes. slow down and be like, you know what? Now it's time to be a father and slow down on the works. You know what, man? I'm, I'm definitely. I'm trying to. Uh, I'm trying to. I, I think I do need to 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 go a little slower. Um, you know, now that we're we're getting back to a place of old, we're getting back to life as we once knew it. You know, there is. But can nice, you do that, or are you a, like you have to? Are you addicted to? No, nah, I'm. Not, I got a problem. I'm not gonna sit up here and act like I, I think don't. We all do, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a workaholic. Um, but like I said, it's a it's about the foundation. It's about this thing, and you know, making sure the bricks are secure, making sure they can't move. And you know, you start to ask yourself different questions. I'm getting older. I'm 42. So what am I doing it for? What is it? What is it about? 
um, at this point? Is it about legacy? Is it about, um, you know, something that's evergreen, something that lasts with or without me? Is it about um, mailbox money? Is it about informing uh, and giving information to our culture so that our culture sees what we have access to and what's what's the reality in the world of you know in the world of opportunity like it's, it's all it's, the above yeah it's mm-hmm. like you know you gotta you start to ask these questions so i think the role becomes bigger and you know it's like you you grow so the guy that was once a comedian is so much fucking more mm-hmm. than that now right mm-hmm. it's 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 I've I've gotten to a place where I opened up a door and that door had like thirty other doors. I just start peeking in those doors. Mm-hmm. So um, I know I know the different versions of success, and I just want to tap into all of them. And I think um, I think people will look back right now. You may not realize it, but if you look at the things that I've done, right? If you go comedy, dramedy, action adventure, action comedy, comedy drama, drama thriller. Uh, docu series, documentary, hosting, mm-hmm. animation, author, uh, radio host, podcast host. Like it's, I'm tapping into mm-hmm. every single outlet because what I realized that everybody should, you can do it all if you want to. Mm-hmm. There is no ceiling. There is no, there is no space that you go to and it's like, oh shit, I got to stop here, right? Like mm-hmm. you can do as much as you want. So, um. I'm having fun and discovering how much more, you know, the world of venture and VC, uh, stocks and real estate, all of this shit. Like there's so much um, that you can do to occupy your fucking time and your mind. And that's what I'm in love with. So I don't know. I don't know about slowing down. I think removing myself from in front of the camera at some point, Mm -hmm. uh, that'll be the priority. But the world of what's going on behind will, will probably be 10 times as much as what it was when I was in front. You know, your conversations have always been so interesting to me because you've always been so self-aware. And to hear you talk now saying things like, because I heard you on All The Smoke, and you were saying things like you won't always be considered the funniest or be the hottest at the moment. Mm-hmm. What, about, what about about that realization? Uh, I mean, that's reality. Everything that goes up eventually comes down. But when you come down, you know, you don't have to fall. <laughs> you can you can come down and and be better than you were when you are up, if you manage shit correctly, mm-hmm. right? You know, like it's it's not about uh, being the best anymore, and that's where you grow up. Mm-hmm. You know, there was a there was a moment in the beginning where it's like I'm the fucking best. I gotta be the best. I gotta be number one, and then you realize that that mindset, you know, that's one that uh that that pits people against each other. It's almost as if you know the world of success can't you can't coexist with other people that are just as good. In our culture, I realize that's the fucked up thing about us. We have this mentality of it can only be one, mm-hmm. right? It can only be one person, one great, but that's not correct, right? If, you, if you're if you like, I need to be the best for me and do things that are great for mm-hmm. me and operate in my world, in my spectrum at the highest level, well, you're thinking about self, I'm not thinking about everybody else or what else is going on. I'm thinking about me. How do I fucking manage this machine? How do I mm-hmm. maneuver properly for me? Um, that's the mindset that I now have. And I can't say it enough, man, you grow the fuck up. Mm-hmm. You grow up and when you evolve and mature, uh, the best thing that changes is just your mindset. My mindset is different. Mm-hmm. I operate differently, you know what I mean? You're not, I'm not, I'm not in the world of uh, being bothered or uh, aggravated or annoyed. I'm not in the world of care when it comes to other people's needs or wants. You fell yeah. back off social media a lot. Uh, absolutely. You like, water right there if you wanted to. Wait, am I, I got the white mouth? So I'm glad to see you doing this a little easier. Well, that's because I thought I spit. Oh, I didn't okay. want to. Okay. I don't want <laughs> to have spit come out of my mouth. But it's there if you wanted to. I feel like that looks sick. Yeah. yeah I didn't want to do that. No, no. Uh, yeah, why, I mean, you have to fall back off of that. Mm-hmm. I think the generation now that's embraced it, they're at a new level than what it was when I was on there. and uh, We don't have that level of fuckery in us. Nah, Maybe nah, we nah, just nah. too old for that. Yeah. I, 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 nah, nah, well, I mean, look, the social media is dope as fuck. Don't, don't, I'm not going to shit on it or piss on it, but, you know, it's not the most positive place in the world. Mm, no. Right? It's a, it's a lot of, mm-hmm. it's a lot of bullshit on there. So I don't really, uh, I don't engage in it. I use it for marketing, for promo, and, you know, give things and splashes and blurbs, but I'm not on that bitch reading and searching. I'm not, I'm not in that. 
I'm not over there no more. Have you had to cut people off because they don't see the new version of you? Like they still see the old Kev from from Philly who they might have been doing stand up with, but they don't recognize you as the the I think, mogul. I think that takes time. Like when people say cut people off, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's a that's an effort. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, like a set like of boundaries. I, yeah, I mean, but you just you you remove yourself from shit that just doesn't work for you. I'm not I'm just not negative. Mm-hmm. Right? So if you're if you are a cloud in some way, shape, or form, or if you present some type of dark energy, well, I'm just, I'm not around it. I don't need to announce it. Mm-hmm. I don't need to be like, yo, I ain't fucking with you no more because you on that shit. I'm just like, oh, mm. yeah, and yeah, I'm, you know, I, 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 I go over there. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just a little more removed from, uh, from bad shit, from bad energy. But is that difficult? Because you were so accessible when you were coming out. You, you know, everybody knew Kev. You, you know, and, but now it's like. Kev is a different Kev. Like he's not the same Kev. Yeah, I think that's the that's the part that makes me laugh. You know, when people want I, I was I forgot I was having a conversation with I was doing an interview and they were talking about stand up. Actually I was this was in All the Smoke where, you know, they were like, Well, how do you feel just about people when they they go to you and they go to you being funny and they say, Man, you you were funnier back then or mm-hmm. you you used to be funny mm-hmm. or you used to be raw and it's like, well, yeah, because you used to be different. So when you grow up, your your energy changes. That's you right. know, you you're not fast all the time. Mm. Like that's why, so people get slow, right? right? right. You saying Bo is fucking amazing, but mm. he can't run the same time now that he ran then. Mm. Like right. as you get older, you fucking change. So it's almost as if people are afraid to embrace that change. That's right. Like that you're afraid to embrace the different versions of you. You know, and you don't get worse, you get better. That's right. You you do get better. So the the world where people put you against yourself uh, just doesn't make sense. Like if you if you're comparing me to me, and you're saying I was once this and I'm not that, well, you're asking me to be better than what I once was. When I feel like I'm better, like I'm I'm evolved. But if your perception of me is in the place of old, well, that's where you were happy that's with right. me, right? right? And that's fine, but. Where I'm at now, I'm happier. Yeah, with me. So mm-hmm. I think in life, at some point you gotta realize, motherfucker is about about me. I'm I'm the one that's gotta be happy at the end of the day. I'm the one that's gotta be okay with the direction that I'm going in. And when you find that great balance of peace of fucking poise, then you're you're in a different you're in a different place. So my my balance is dope as fuck right now, and that's just with me growing that's with me seeing shit differently with me experiencing things with me going through trials tribulations ups downs hurdles whatever you get to just a place of dope and that's where i'm at you know what i mean Mm -hmm. you're not you you do know you surpassed hotness though like like you're kevin hart like kevin hart is like a a verb almost you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like you're a comedic icon like you surpassed hot i know i'm not i mean i don't i don't argue i've done a lot of shit yeah yeah yeah. but i'm the world of proving that is you know, that's the one that you got to get past, right? Like, you mm-hmm. you, you go through the spot where you're like, are you fucking kidding me? Oh, y'all got... Oh, so you don't know. <laughs> Bitch, I was... Mm-hmm. Don't make... I used to... You 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 do have that, mm-hmm. but then you get to the point where you're like, but why am I... Who am I... Who am I trying to prove? Like, who, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, like who am I... Who am I proving this to? When it's all said and done and, you know, we got a point to look at a portfolio at said time in my career, well, the stuff is there. Mm-hmm. You know what's done is done. It's it's in stone. Analytics, numbers, accomplishments, resume, portfolio. It's all there. So if anybody wanted to see, you can go fucking see. If you don't, you don't have to. It doesn't matter to me. Mm-hmm. I'm not. My energy is different. I'm <laughs> I'm 42 mm-hmm. and rich. 42 wealthy. Man. Oh, that's nobody's yeah, business. Yeah, yeah you. Well, Charlemagne always wants to know about money. I, I'm telling you. I, I told him one day. I thought he had him the wire. This is the other day. <laughs> Asked me a lot of questions about money, and I just, I literally, I just looked at him different. I said, "What are you trying to do?" It's, it's not like, about the money, though. I think, it's the... I think he's, I think it's the government. No, <laughs> the taxes. I think it's, he's trying to save on taxes. It's not about the money. <laughs> it's yeah. about what you, what you've done to get to that point. Yeah. But sadly, it, we live in a society where people, you know, look at the money and be like, "Oh, that's yeah. how he getting that." Yeah, but what, what I want people to take away from it, though, it's, it's the understanding of. This door opens up other doors, mm-hmm. right? And that's what I want people just to start to 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 think about, to process, right? And life life is a fucking game. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't care if people think so or not. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, life is a game. Mm-hmm. 
And the game is about finding a way to succeed. Now, that doesn't mean money. Right. Success comes in happiness. It comes in joy, love. Uh, it can be financial. There's so many different versions of success. Mm -hmm. But in life, the game is trying to figure it out, trying to find it, right? And how you do it, how you approach it, that's up to you. Mm -hmm. But you got the course of when you're born to mm -hmm. year what? 75, 80, mm -hmm. 65, 90, whatever that is, you got from that time to this time to find out how to win your version of the game. That's right. So when it's all said and done, how did you play the game? How did you win the game? Right. Um, in this game for me, well, what am I trying to set up? Oh, fuck. If it is about playing the game, how can I win? But how can I set shit up? And how can I help other people win? Mm -hmm. That's where I'm at in the game. Mm -hmm. So if I play it right for me, well, everybody else is going to have an easier version of the game because I'm just going to give information. I'm not giving you advice. I'm giving you right. information. And if you take the information and you use it properly, how much did it work for you? Did it did it did it act as an asset for you? Did these things that I create help pivot and springboard you into whatever? I'm doing my part to make the game easier for other people. Do you ever feel you're too accessible? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And you got to figure out how to cut that off. But I'm a personality. Like I, I actually love people. And that's my biggest problem. I'm a I'm a people person. You think okay. you're a people pleaser? Used to be. Mm -hmm. Used to be. Used it, it used to be. It used to be about, hey man, what do you mean? Like you're not having a good time? Come on. Right? Or hungry. Everybody's hungry. Come on. Or what do you mean you don't like me? How? What I do? I'm the nicest. Mm -hmm. I'm the how? I don't have a bad bone in my body. I'm a good. Come on, no, look, this is, I used to be that, mm -hmm. that person. And when you are that, there's a lot of energy wasted in trying to do things for the approval of. Mm -hmm. And there, there's a light bulb that has to go off. You gotta be like, well, why, why am I, like these people have no effect on my actual day to day, my mm -hmm. actual life. So you, there's a light bulb that clicked for me I was like, in being accessible and being too available, um, I'm I'm just giving too much energy into shit that doesn't give energy back. So where the where should that energy be prioritized at? Where should I focus on giving it? And once you figure that out, and you figure out the people that are aligned to get it, receive it, give it back, and it's a nice yin and yang, then it gets better. So um, as far as accessibility, I think that just comes in transparency. I'm very transparent. Mm -hmm. I'm very, life is what it is, and I can, I'll put it out there. I don't give a fuck what it is. Are you going to do another season of uh, uh, Don't Fuck This Up, speaking of transparency? Um, we I talked about it because the documentary was was dope. It was honest. Um, but it has to be when there's, there's stuff to follow. You know, I don't want it just to focus on my world of work and success. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like that's a, that's a good layer. I think, you know, you want to just show the, you want to show how, how complex life is in general and that nobody is nobody is free from bullshit right so that's what don't fuck this up was mm -hmm. it was bullshit is bullshit is there regardless mm -hmm. of who you are where you are you're going to go through it um i think i think the documentary side of I, my next one will be based on my company the company's growth and the people within it and how they're managing success mm -hmm. from the thing we built. I don't want to. I don't want to be the focus. Yeah, want, that billion want, dollar episode is gonna be crazy. Yeah, like when y'all sell for a billion, not, I, don't, that, I, don't, what, I don't know what. That's. I didn't. I never. That's not. I didn't say that. It's going. It's going to happen. I don't so, know what you're talking about. I'm putting about. it in the atmosphere. It's going to happen. Maybe it's in the atmosphere. I'm just looking you at. Don't what, know. I'm not. I'm just saying. I'm not. I'm just looking around. I see what Reese Witherspoon did. I see what Spring Hill did. I'm like, Heartbeat is absolutely next. I saw I mean, a trade. I saw an article. It was like. You know, it's hard to be getting su suitors. People are sniffing around. I, I mean, saw it. I read these things. I, I read mean, the traits. Well, if you read it, then maybe you saw it. I, don't, I mean, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what to tell you here. Anything you regret about doing it uh, on the docuseries? Anything you regret? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. Docu documentary, the docuseries Don't Fuck This Up, was dope because it showed how to find solution and problem. Mm -hmm. Right? And I think today, everybody's focused on problem. Everybody's focused on the argument. How many people are focused on the solution and a conversation to stop the argument, mm -hmm. right? Um, everybody wants to be right. You're wrong. 
I'm right. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to go, you can have your opinion. And that's how you feel. Right. Good. Good for you. Like people, I don't, I don't. Yeah, the back and forth. Yeah, I don't understand what, like, what, we don't have to agree. We don't have to be the same. And if I choose to not agree or be the same, the new shit is, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's just not how, that's not why people are individuals. We're individuals because we think different, we operate different. We're not the same. And it doesn't mean that we have to be against each other. We just don't have to agree, but we can still get along. We can still fucking get along. You like coffee, I like tea. Mm-hmm. I don't hate you because you fucking like coffee. You shouldn't hate me because I like tea. We can right. drink it at the same time. Be happy for you, I'm happy for me. Let's find a solution. I'm uh, I'm big on that. So, you know, the world of uh, conflict and negativity, I think, is one that's embraced highly today. Now, you, you, have some, you have some big social media moments in the last couple of months. Don Cheadle's age. Oh, uh, amazing. Right. Damn. That right was hilarious. Amazing. That fucking was Don. hilarious. Amazing. amazing. Real, real moment. But was it a real moment? <laughs> yeah. Goodness gracious. You can't fake that. Yeah, you can't fake that. You heard his heart. Like, you heard his heart. I watched that shit a hundred times. Don is one famous. of my closest friends. Don no, is fine. Nope. For That's a second, I saw it in his face. He yeah. was like, Don you, Cheeto and I are extremely close. I agree, but you still heard his feelings. You, you heard, heard his your friend's feelings. feelings. Did you I heard his feelings. He, he thought I knew. I didn't know. <laughs> We can, tell, a, we can yeah, tell you didn't, didn't know. know. I didn't know. A, Damn you all. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you, you don't throw that out there like that. He, <laughs> he, was fucking, he was clean shaven. He was. He had a fucking young look to him that day. He told me that. I said, you got to be fucking shitting me. I didn't know that, Don. I know what you yeah, meant, yeah. but it just didn't come yeah, off. It, like it came out wrong. It didn't come off like that. Well, how do you think I felt? He caught me off guard. Yeah, it, 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 when, you started, but it, when you started explaining afterwards, that's what made it even more funny. <laughs> yeah, he said, he said, he looked at me. I said, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> he said, yes, you did. I said, no, no, I didn't. I was, that's like, rewind the tape. Yeah, that's not, <laughs> you get when you watch it. <laughs> when you watch it, you'll see that that's not, that wasn't how I. How many times did you laugh at it after you saw it back? Well, when we did it, you don't realize it, but mm-hmm. when people start cutting the shit up, you know, the internet is goddamn dangerous. They can do anything they want. How awkward was it? Because they look uncomfortable. It wasn't awkward for me. I thought five times I I wasn't that old. <laughs> it ain't for me. <laughs> he didn't damn me. I damned him. It, wasn't, yeah, it was awkward for Don. Uh, but Don's Don, man. And that's I think that's the beauty of that show. Heart to Heart is it's no there's no script, there's no there's no like prep. It's just mm-hmm. it's it's just conversation. Mm-hmm. So when I have guests on that talk show, they literally just show up and we sit down. They don't there's no idea of where the conversation mm-hmm. is gonna go. It just flows. We talk strictly for an hour. So I think that's the beauty of that raw conversation and what can happen. I also thought it was big that uh, I, I don't I don't know the, the comedian's name, so I apologize that uh, he was tied up in something that was going on in your life and you forgave him. You talked about it. And what made you say, you know what, I'm going to be a bigger man and I'm going to forgive the situation and all that? Uh, I mean, I don't know which comedian you're talking about, but I can assume who. I can't remember his name. And I don't um, be I'm, uh, I'm very, once again, it's just where I'm at. I don't have the time for BS. Right. And what I what I found, like, there's a lot of. There's a lot of like, who's funnier? Mm-hmm. Who's funnier than and and you know, some of these comics take that and they they run with those narratives and they they get engulfed in that shit. And I just don't, I don't care, mm-hmm. right? Like I'm, it's not competition. What we, got you there? What got you at that level of not caring and say, you know what? It's, Google is net worth. Well, I've never been. You know what though? You got to be honest. I've never been the, I've never been the I'm better than guy. I've never been the. The uh, I do feel like you've been the I'm out work you guy. I'm, I'm absolutely. I'm, I am that. all day. Mm-hmm. I'm a thousand percent the guy that's gonna go to the gym and put up seven thousand jump shots because I think the other person shoots five hundred. I'm gonna I'm gonna outwork mm-hmm. anyway. It's because once again I'm addicted to the work, but I just I don't like the crabs in the barrel mentality. I don't like the idea that there can only be one, and it only lives in our culture. This only lives, we talked about it, it only lives right. in the world of, of black people, right? Like if, if, if we saw a competitive nature across the board in mm-hmm. mainstream America um, as well, where these artists or these entertainers or these entrepreneurs or these businessmen, um, if they attacked one another all the time and that was the way of the world, then I would get it, I would understand it. But... It's our culture, our culture, like for some reason, you know, we 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 love to pit ourselves against one another. And that's the that's a downfall. 
that's a major downfall mm-hmm. that we have. And I think, you know, when we start to correct it and we start to embrace one another, give each other flowers, say the fuck that we support said individual, said level of success. Understand that another person's success has nothing to do with yours. If anything, it amplifies your opportunity. Mm-hmm. It doesn't take away from yours. It amplifies it. So what the next man and woman are doing, if they're doing it correct, holy shit, I get to see what happens if, and damn, that's another door that's open that I could. Right. right? Instead, there's this weird thing of, fuck you. Mm-hmm. They shouldn't. I want to take. I need that. I, and that's that's what I don't have time for. So when I when you talk about the world of comic and you know the back and forth that I've had, I'm just you. I was talking about that situation, but I, I know I, what you're I, talking I, about. I respect it, but I was yes. saying, but the fact that you're forgiving and that you can look over things is just is is a step I haven't got to yet. But I love the fact that you're there. Why? You? What's your problem? <laughs> Honestly, yeah. What's your problem? Um, revenge. For what? I don't know. It feels make me feel good. Make me feel warm and cuddly. Light skin shit, bro. Like, like, let him, like, let him be light skin. Let him but be what does it do? Like after you, after you get said revenge, then All right. what? I'll break it down. Right. So Kevin Hart, right? Kevin Hart, we joke with you, we laugh with you. Mm-hmm. I've known you for a long time, and you've never been a negative guy, right? Mm-hmm. You always reach your hand out if you can. Mm-hmm. You always make sure if you hear something, somebody's in trouble. Or I've said some wild stuff on this radio. You always reached out, envy. You're saying this wrong. You should have mm-hmm. said it this way, right? You've always been like that to everybody. Mm-hmm. So you don't bother nobody, mm-hmm. right? I don't bother nobody. So when somebody... That's not true. I don't. So when somebody tries to attack you Mm -hmm. for no reason, it almost feels like, why me? I don't do anything to nobody, you know? So it feels like, you know, now I want you to die living. But but that's that's life. That's life. It it is what it is, right? And you, and in today's time, any narrative can be attached to anybody. Correct. Anything. Like, it's it's honestly sad how... It's different when it affects you, but now when it's something that could affect your family. But I'm telling you... That's different. But I'm saying no matter what... The reality, the reality of the world that we live in today, it's it's claim first, no proof, no mm-hmm. no real like idea if said thing or said mm-hmm. said verbal is is true at all. Mm-hmm. Yo, man, you don't like fucking white people. If I say that, it's said. So today's mm-hmm. time, it has to be true. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. There, there, there is no world of nah. It's bullshit. Yeah, there's no due right. process. There's no there's like, there's no due diligence of yeah. nah, guys. That's actually not true. Right, right. Like you know, I, I'm gonna take this. You know, for my for my brother Dave. I I did an interview. Uh, not not dropping who I did an interview for, but just for clarification, I did an interview with Wall Street Journal, mm-hmm. and the reporter asked me. He was like, you know, how do you feel about Dave, um, just coming to your defense. And, and how does that make you feel? Do you feel like he's rehashing things that you went to? And I said, why do you feel like he's coming to my defense? I said, why, 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 why can't you see that he's just my my friend? Right. Like if you, that's my friend. So right. as a friend, if you have friends and something happened to your friend, if you are a friend, mm-hmm. you're like, hey man, I didn't like how they did my guy. That's right. right. You're not trying to come to my defense. You're just speaking on behalf. Of your friend. Especially right. when you know a person. Mm-hmm. If you really know I, yeah, right? yeah, it's certain, certain things you see, you like, I know that's not him. It's, right. Here's here's where here's where me and Dave just laugh, right? The conversation attached to Dave's name is attached to him as if people know him. Right. right? The fucked up reality about Dave Chappelle, this motherfucker has everybody around him. He's too, he, yeah. Like when, yeah. when I say everybody, United Nations, I'm talking about everybody. <laughs> yeah. So, so like when the conversation attached to the LGBTQ plus community, and it's attached with a negative narrative mm-hmm. in association with Dave, you 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 didn't really do your due diligence in looking at his world. Right. That community is really around him. Like. His friends, like I'm talking close friends, mm-hmm. are a part of that community. I'm talking people that Dave has embraced and has loved for years mm-hmm. that are like, Dave, that's not true. Mm-hmm. This motherfucker loves and has loved. So the narrative once once put on and once attached was spirals. Motherfucker's worse than a tornado. That's right. Because once it starts going, then people just attach, and that shit get to spinning. Right. And before you know it, it gets up, and all of a sudden, you hate. When when did I ever? I never said that. Mm-hmm. Nobody ever. Mm-hmm. That's never came out my mouth. I don't. You would think that you lived with me and you saw me bash or you saw me do. 
That's the fucked up thing about today. So when you talk about revenge, you're in a never ending cycle of yeah. of incomplete, buddy. Like that revenge ain't coming. <laughs> like mm-hmm. the win that you're looking for don't exist. Mm-hmm. So if you're not mature and cool enough just to chuck up deuces to the thing that you can't control and give a goddamn salute, mm-hmm. well, nigga, you're gonna be unhappy for a minute. <laughs> you're gonna be fucked up for a minute. It's 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 bad to have that mindset, especially in today's time, as if you don't see it. Mm. It's easy. And it's honestly not going to be corrected. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be corrected. Nah. Like, what? you know, with the world of social media and, you know, the 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 idea of what cancel and cancel culture has become, the thing that it was and what was necessary and needed for the moments where you had to use it, it's now lost. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's now this other thing that's so much, you got to go. Mm-hmm. People have lost fucking sight of reality. you we're destroying people's lives. Like mm-hmm. we're we're saying, and nobody's never, exempt from it. Every, right. It can happen to any and everybody. Anybody. Do, do everybody will get a turn. Do you understand? Like we're now in a place where people, we are going fuck you. We are going to take everything from you now mm-hmm. and walk away. And that is when you walk away. Do you understand that this person that just went through said thing? We're saying like you now can't work ever again. Where, where what what happened to the world of Progression, understanding, mm-hmm. right. apology, solution, growth. When when do we when do we skip? I don't, I don't understand. Right. Like mm-hmm. when when do we skip that? When do we skip? My bad. My bad. I fucked up. All right. mm-hmm. I remember I cussed at a fucking teacher. It's a true story. Today you cuss at a teacher. Well, what's the consequences for a kid doing some adult shit as a kid? If a kid jumps bad in school, whatever, bitch. Okay, every kid goes to that moment where you think you're an adult and you want to try said thing. <laughs> right. And then yeah. you got to get your head knocked off. And after getting your head knocked off, the kid goes, I'm not going to do that no more. You learn mm-hmm. and do better next Th- time. There is no process of learning and understanding right. anymore. Right. There's only a process of consequence. And because of that, that's why I step back, man. I don't want no smoke, y'all. Y'all got it. Yeah, because humans are always fail purity tests. So I don't know why we Absolutely. why we act like we're so perfect. Absolutely. When when did that happen though? When, I, I don't when know. did we all mm-hmm. check into the perfect box? Because I think um you, you should deal with nuance, right? If you don't like a joke I said, you don't like something I said, say you don't like it, tell me what I did wrong, but don't label me as a whole thing because of one bad Correct. statement or one bad joke. I'll I'll go further, right? I'm aware of the changes that need to be made, especially with the conversation attached to respect. Mm -hmm. I think it's dope. Mm -hmm. I think that it is time that we make sure we respect one another. Mm -hmm. I think it is time we make sure that we're treating each other, not only fairly, but with understanding and appreciation that your life may be filled with problems and obstacles that I'm not aware of because my life is not the same. Mm -hmm. Because of that, I need to understand that. I need to fall back. I need to respect that, right? In that same instance, we also all have a choice. You can support or not support. You can watch or not watch. The thing that killed me the most is, you know, when you see all of the conversation that was trying to be attached to Dave's special, Mm -hmm. well, you got an option to go on Netflix. You got an option to search, click, watch. You You don't have to. Right. You don't you really don't have to. I don't have to watch who I don't like. Mm-hmm. There's musicians that I'm just not a fan of. So because of that, I don't go to the concert. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't buy a ticket and go to the show. And if I did buy a ticket and go to the show for the thing that I don't like, I'm buying it to do this. Correct. <laughs> what I don't understand that. That's I can't right. I can't mentally process this when I know I don't like it. I don't like you. So why am I why am I putting myself in a position to frustrate myself further based off what I already know I don't like? Mm-hmm. And that's okay. It's okay to not like or to not fuck with. It's okay. And to have an opinion. If you it's disagree, okay. if you disagree yeah. with that, it's Dave, okay that's fine. like oh, right. I don't like that. That joke isn't for me. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Mm-hmm. But there's now a thing of, well, because I don't like it, y'all can and y'all shouldn't either. That's that's the part where it just gets difficult. And by the way, guys, we're 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 not going to please everybody. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But right. the only thing you can do is try your best to educate, try your best to speak on things in a positive way so that people take the positive side with it and they understand it. I can say I understand a lot more now because of some of the conversations that I had. My mindset's a lot better. I can say that just on behalf of my brother, the thing that's fucked up for me is that, you know, you don't know him. <laughs> that motherfucker's a good dude. He's a good dude. Like a real good dude. That motherfucker loves hard. When you talk about Ohio, he has built a goddamn community, an economy, and a place where he is from to make the place better for the people. The people in Ohio are all fucking different. Mm -hmm. They're all different. Black, white, members of the community, not members of the community. Mm -hmm. I'm talking, he put that on his back. He out there shaking hands. That motherfucker kissing babies in Ohio. He's the mayor out there, and he's doing it for the people. Mm -hmm. You don't know that, man. So when I see people speak on behalf of a man whose intentions are nothing but good and uplifting, it just makes you a wow. Mm -hmm. That's where we are. And this is not to defend. I'm not defending. I'm not coming to Dave's aid. I'm speaking truth of me just going, you don't know the guy. Right. That's it. Mm-hmm. So so when you talk about revenge and you talk about these things, well, I think people are starting to change the narratives as if Dave is trying to war with. Mm-hmm. He's not. Mm-hmm. But that's a narrative that's been created. When that fucking tornado started doing this, well, it gets to a point now where people are like, you're, you're, just, you're just hopping in and you're grabbing right. mm-hmm. on to the fucking opportunity to hate more. Let's talk about a couple more things before you get out of here. I, I, I don't know if this is a joke or not. But the comedy rights itself, are you are you really playing Arnold for one night only on a different oh, revival? Oh, shit. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel, live on stage. We're doing a, a <laughs> What, live, <laughs> what you talking about, Willis? What you yeah. talking about, Willis? Yeah, I thought it was fucking that funny. That just looks, I mean, it just looks funny on paper. It's just, I said, <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy has been doing this thing where they create these old TV shows and they do it live from like a, mm-hmm. a, a play aspect. And he was like, what do you think about Different Strokes? And I was like, it's one of the funniest shows ever. Mm-hmm. He's like, what have we created? And he told me the people that he was thinking about, man. And when Damon Wayans was like, he wants to be Willis and <laughs> you can be on I said, it's fucking genius. Hilarious. So, like, you know, you put your own take on it, but I'm going to be Arnold from Different Strokes. That's funny. I'm going to grow the little fro out and everything. What you have talking you, about, Willis? Like, the whole thing. You practiced your what you're talking about, Willis? I don't need to practice what you're talking about, Willis. Everybody know how to do that. It was just a, all the fucking. It was, that's what it did. It's gonna be funny as shit. Funny. Uh, I also wonder, um, for you who's experienced both, what's the difference between a, a a theatrical release and a Netflix release? Um, I mean now, the biggest difference is you're you're global immediately, depending on your your level of stardom. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I wanted to go over to the platform this is during the pandemic i pivoted because i just didn't know where the world of theatrical was and i didn't want to be behind the eight ball so my conversation with my team my company was one of opportunity to make myself available here and only be available here Mm -hmm. for the course of said time but my way of doing that was i wanted to develop and produce my movie so it was a way to amplify heartbeat productions so heartbeat productions is now responsible for developing the Kevin Hart movies that you'll see on the platform. Um, and doing that, you're, you're, I mean, it's 250 fucking countries, right? Wow. You're, you're, you're universal. And if you are the talent that they can put you on that home page, well, the visibility to you, for you is massive. Mm-hmm. Now, it doesn't mean that I won't go back to theatrical because theatrical is now coming back, but there's a different energy and effort that goes into that. So I think, um, Theatrical and the experience of going to the movies is necessary, is needed. People are still going to do it. But I think you're going to start to see a lot of synergy between making things available easier as time goes on um, on a global on a global scale. So you're seeing like a window shared between streaming and live um, experience. So, you know, you still get the best of both worlds. And I understand why people still want to and people are still dabbling. For me, it was just a better decision to partner with Netflix and the work that we've done. Like, I've been working with them for a long fucking time, so I'm getting older, I don't want to move around as much. This helps me be a little more stable um, and not have to put the same energy into the world tour after and 
going all over on a global mm -hmm. scale. Like, I just kind of wanted to be a little more stable, be home a little more. A couple right. more questions. Uh, SBH, the company at Audible. Yes. Uh, you know, the company we have at Audible. Next yes. year we start rolling out projects. How you feeling about that venture? And do you think people understand what it is we're I doing? I think they will. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think when you, when you say it, make sure you make people understand the initiative and reason behind it, right? Like, mm -hmm. I think when people now say your name, they 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 speak of it in one tone, but once again, when you really know the person, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, he's got a different drive and initiative. When you look at the books and you read the books, well, what is his real, what's his real want, mm -hmm. right? When you hear people speak on behalf of the culture and the people, mm -hmm. well, what are they really trying to do? Like, are you, are you a part of the problem or are you trying to be a part of the solution? The problem is the significant gap in our economy mm -hmm. from black to white, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the solution is being a part of the attempt to close said gap, mm -hmm. uh, bring people closer, bring things to them. This entity that we created, well, we saw a gap uh, in the space of audio literature. Mm -hmm. And in this space, our culture hasn't been embracing the world of knowledge that's available here. So in this entity, well, how the fuck can we deliver it in a way that can be creative enough mm -hmm. where our culture can come over mm -hmm. and grab onto things that they didn't know existed? Well, we're gonna create IP through audio. We can create experiences, we can create content and have it available. We can also bring in talent to take a hold of previous content mm -hmm. that may or may not even be known about. Mm -hmm. Attach content or person to content to read. Their voice alone attracts our younger demographic and generation to come and get the knowledge. So mm -hmm. in this space, I think that our opportunity success is, is extremely high. And you know, for the projects that we've already signed on to do, the original IPs that we're mm -hmm. creating, uh, the things that have existed that we're going to amplify by attaching talent, I just think that the world of great is real. And you know, I gotta also give Audible credit for knowing where there is a void, for mm -hmm. knowing where their numbers lack, and for saying we trust in you guys to create this entity. And rather than us trying to just control, let's partner. Mm -hmm. You know, so for a company of that magnitude to say, well, we're going to give you guys the money. They gave us the money. Now run a machine, create the company that you said you could do. We're trusting in you to do that. And as your partner, how can we assist you? This is the world of solution. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about the need for diversity, inclusion, when we're talking about um, making sure that the black voices and that the mm -hmm. black portfolio within business is 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 given a shot. When you got companies like that that are on the proper side of the conversation by saying, we understand mm -hmm. and we want to help, mm -hmm. that's a dope thing. We don't hear about that side of conversation enough. We hear about the problem more. Um, I like to amplify the conversation on behalf of the solution. So, you know, dude, I'm proud of you. Uh, I love the, the direction that you're going in. And as a partner, mm -hmm. once again, like he's not a work for hire. He don't work for me. Um, all the knowledge and experience that I have, we're partners. So I'm bringing value to his idea. Mm -hmm. He had a dope idea. All right. I'm on your train, brother. How can I help amplify? I got this whole machine over here. I got a whole bunch of shit over here. How can I bring value to this? And to his credit, he has a world of people that these he now is on the scene. Like Charlamagne got a team, man. Mm -hmm. Shit fucking made me it made me smile to get on conference calls and hear people speaking on his behalf. On his behalf with the vision that he has to help execute. Mm -hmm. So um I think the world is gonna definitely be shocked. I think that they're in for a treat. And I think the world of audio originals and IP is growing. We love to listen. Right. Uh, the taking time to mm -hmm. actually sit down and read a book, some people don't have it. So how do we bring that literature to you from an audio perspective? SBH, Short Black and Handsome Productions. Uh, I have two more questions. One of y'all. Okay. Shut up. I mean, it's just it's a name. <laughs> just to, what's your problem? Hmm? What's your fucking problem? Man? You got to get rid of this anger, man. <laughs> Beige rage is what we call it. Beige, Beige rage. rage. <laughs> Two more questions. At this point in your career, who do you get the most game from? Man, um, I tell you who people don't give enough credit to. Tyler Perry is a machine. Yes. Right? Um, the, the business mind, uh, the ability to really change the narrative in business and how deals are done and how they're made. Uh, the world of you can't do that 
doesn't exist for a man that finds ways to. Uh, I love to just watch the way he moves. Um, Steve you know, Harvey. a couple years ago, real quick, you know, a couple years ago, Tyler said to me, nobody ever taps him up for information. He mm -hmm. said, it's only been two people. He said, you and uh, Tiffany, I think he said. Tiffany had He's a. I'm like, huh? He's a <laughs> Tyler Perry is one of the smartest motherfuckers on the planet. Mm -hmm. And he's not smart from a rocket scientist, brilliant, I have all the answers perspective. He's smart from the side of why can't we do that? Mm -hmm. Tell me why, because I feel like we can. So tell me why we can't, and then I'm just going to give you an idea of why I think we can. And when you put people in a position to answer your questions, right? Like sometimes business is one-sided where you're just, you're just answering the questions asked. But when you ask them back and you have an ability to challenge without being aggressive, you find new portals. You find new, new revenue streams. And, you know, he's built an enterprise. Tyler Perry is a enterprise. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people really give enough credit where credit is due. In Atlanta, you know, you got stages now mm -hmm. that are owned by a black man, mm -hmm. right? The crazy part is who do you think partners with this black man to do projects now? The studios have to partner with Tyler Perry right. mm -hmm. because they need to access his fucking world of, of, of production. We need places to shoot and film. Atlanta, the tax breaks are insane. To have the mindset to say, I'm going to build here because people come here because of the tax breaks. So no matter what, they have to do business with me, whether you want to or not. Marvel was using Tyler Perry stages. Yeah, do you man. understand yeah. that? Yeah. Like people don't understand yeah. the way this motherfucker moves, man. I applaud him. I love him to death. Um, Hove. Hove. I, I'm, I am... Uh, I'm different in the world of VC because I've watched how Hove has moved. Mm -hmm. um, that motherfucker has no problem with sitting down, talking to me, and sharing information. But more importantly, Hove J. Brown, um, the world of partnership when it comes to investing is not just about your money. It's not just about putting your money into things. It's about understanding how to make businesses grow. Mm -hmm. He grabs the concept. Shout out to Nas, too. Nas is another one that was into it for years and mm -hmm. was quiet about it. These guys grasp the concept of I can bring value to a company and me bringing value to a company. If a company grows and they exit, oh, my God, I'm a part of that win. I'm a part of that financial success. Mm -hmm. How many ways can we figure out mm -hmm. how to do that? And what you, what you start to realize is that the persona behind the star well, it's bigger because that star, his value is not only is shaking hands, but the other business relationships that the company may need may be easier to access because of his now involvement. Your value is big on your likeliness. So what I've watched and understood was how people used their likeliness. Mm -hmm. When you look at Brian, Brian moves different now. Mm -hmm. Brian's likeliness is valuable. So Von, Brian being in the world of business with said partners and those partners now embedding themselves in his business and the things that he wants to do, those relationships grow. Mm -hmm. Your likeliness is the biggest fucking asset that you have. So in the world of venture, in the world of investing, well, when you invest your time, that's stronger than the dollar. So watching the way that my brothers move, and I say brothers because that's what I mean, that's 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 information, that's right. school. Mm -hmm. We're all in school. So my respect and admiration for the people that have given the blueprint uh, and that don't hesitate to give the information, um, I, I, I applaud it. Oprah, Oprah has given the blueprint for years. I don't think people really understand <laughs> What all Oprah has going on? Like, Oprah's got a network. A network. Like, Oprah's got a full functioning network that has a full fucking day of content mm -hmm. each day of the week. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's, that's not, that's not small. Like, you right. got a network. That means I can watch a show produced by mm -hmm. and developed by underneath the brand of. Mm -hmm. Whether she's present, there, not there, this machine it's controlled and operated because of her vision and her want to create opportunities for. So I don't I don't think that these are the conversations that people have enough. Mm -hmm. um, and these are the ones that I'm just conscious of, I'm aware of. So that's where my motivation comes from. Uh, Unk, Steve Harvey, love him to death. There's nobody that cusses and talks to me more. Mm -hmm. Motherfucker, do right. Do what you're mm -hmm. supposed to do. Steve, he cusses for no reason, too. Very foul <laughs> mouth. Um, but he never has shied away from educating me. Right. So, you know, I, 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 am, I am a student forever, regardless of 
how big this thing gets. I'm a student. Mm-hmm. I want to listen. I want to learn. And, you know, I know I said those are the the black uh, people and partners. Um, but I got to shout out Mike Rubin. Mm-hmm. Mike Rubin. Uh, I mean, when you talk about partners, me and Mike Rubin right now, we're developing a a fast food plant-based restaurant. Right. And Mike Rubin. In Philly? We're, oh, we're global. Oh, like we're, oh. we're developing a real chain. And I talked to Ruben, wow. and Ruben said, Kev, if you like it and you want to do it, I'm going to partner with you. Here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to access it. And before I knew it, Ruben had me in a room with all of the partners that he has. You know, Ruben's got crazy business with fanatics. He's got amazing businesses uh, in the world of VC where where he has attached himself to some of the fucking most powerful people in the globe to walk me in there, introduce, allow me to shake the hands, allow me to develop these relationships, and then back me. That's strong. Right. So, you know, I, I, I get Cut flowers. Cut your folks in. I get flowers. I, I would actually love did. to be involved. You know what I did, man, for my for my guys? I uh, did like a little... Did like a little... Uh, uh, portal of shares and I told him I said you know you guys I win we all win but you know the team we we play in these games together so what you find is the world of percentages points shares mm-hmm. it's a valuable world and some people <laughs> some people realize that some people don't but it's very big to allow people to come in on mm-hmm. ventures on opportunities because once again and matter of fact I will show man because I think it's dope just for what we're doing and once again just to show how relationships work the audible side of it, right? Mm-hmm. When we get to the side of this thing living and this thing going, well, accessing people in their ears, hey, Audible, maybe there's a world where you partner and you have, how can we promote market? Like, that's the world of mm-hmm. relationships, venture, VC. That's that's the space that I'm in. So remember I was talking about the star mm-hmm. being bright, me backing away. This is where my gotcha. this is where my passion wow. is now. I'm over there. I'm on that side. I'm loving wow. it. Well, this, is my, this is my last question. I know you want to be a billionaire. Has the Illumina- Illuminati approached you about sacrificing anyone to make it happen? All the time. Okay. Yeah, according to the internet, I've been in the Illuminati. Yeah. By the way, I've never. I still don't know what it is. Like, what is it? Is it a? Is it a club? What is it? I don't. You're closer to me. I don't know yet. What is it? What do you know exactly? If you don't know that none of us know. But if you want to sacrifice somebody, you can sacrifice your partner. This is what, so. What they say you're supposed to sacrifice? Sacrifice partner. What's the thing where they said people eating babies? What was that? Uh, that said, was Pizza Gate, right? Pizza Gate, okay. Yeah. I was in that too. You was in Pizza Gate? That's what they said. Oh, you wow, wow. they wow, yeah. wow. Said I was eating babies. You up there. Wow. They think you like. So, what is that? Wow. So, Illuminati and Pizza Gate, not the same thing. No, no, I don't think it's the same. Uh, it might be the same elite circles. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they eating babies for sure. That's what they say, they, yeah. yeah they eating babies. This clip right here is going to probably, they're going to put this up too and say, see, Absolutely. I don't see. know how they're they doing it right in our on. face. How yeah. they put that Especially on. with your hand, you got the hand, that's the hand sign right there. Is What is this? I don't know, I'm just saying. I was about to say, fuck. So, the restaurant is going to be a baby based. Restaurant, so you're gonna eat babies. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it? What is it? Plant I forgot. Base, man. It was plant. Plant. Not babies. Oh, they said baby base. Plant fast food place. How yeah. many cars do you have, man? That's right. You are a car guy. Yeah. I don't like. Uh, I don't like to put my bins out there, but I'll show you something. <laughs> I'm I'll show you one of my garages. Please, I'm gonna show please, you what just dropped. Hold on. I see. I see the cars. You. you, you. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna tell people. But I'm gonna show you something that just came. Uh, the first one. Ooh. I'm not. Don't say it. But just I'm not gonna say it. it. Here. I'm not gonna say it. That just came. I don't like the, you know, I don't like giving people ammunition. It's the first one. First one done, developed. Electric. The first it's one. It's electric. Produced. Boogie, woogie, woogie. <laughs> strong, right? I want to come next year. Strong. But. strong. But it's okay. Uh, but I'm, I'm heavy in that world. I love them. That's yeah. my hobby. Okay. But see that? Like, I don't like to give that information. I don't like yeah. giving people ammunition. Go, fuck you, man. <laughs> so well, I just. Kevin Hart, it's always a pleasure. Always, always inspirational. Man. Always motivational. Always, man. You guys do it right. Congrats, uh, I like that, man. Look, I want to say uh, true story. It comes on uh, Netflix, November twenty fourth. Guys, it doesn't disappoint. It is a uh, jeez. Like four weeks ago. Oh, oh, oh! Not too many people got that one. It's art. This is artwork. Got that. It's artwork. They're, they're investments for people yes. that don't know. They're investments. Go, well, what do you right mean now. for people that don't know? This is the the market in this in this space is insane. Especially when you grab and you can get something that's premium. In this and you hold on, dude. You you'll probably you'll probably go anywhere from thirty to fifty percent. Absolutely. In in value. Absolutely. Anywhere. Absolutely. It's artwork. Yes, it is. 
That's this is told, strong. That's what I tell my wife anyway. It's all at work, baby. Yeah. It's all at work. She, she won't understand yeah, it. She won't understand. At least you tell yours. I just I just show up with shit. <laughs> she just she see it. I'm like, I've been here that way. <laughs> yeah, 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 I've been. This I just don't thing. see it. This what, it's not there. It's at the other garage. <laughs> oh. The garage. My wife's like, oh. Yeah, dude, what? You tripping. You don't remember this? You don't remember this. That's, that's why I don't show you shit. That's how I drive yeah. my trick. My wife. Wow. I don't say shit. Um, but like I said, true story, November 24th, man. It's going down. Uh, series, drama, filler, thriller, myself, Wesley Snipes. Shouts out to my brother, Wesley Snipes. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for raising my game, um, for teaching, for making me understand the world of fucking uh, dopeness uh, that's attached to the craft of acting, man. He is who he is for a reason. And the fact that he came to uh, to play uh, with me on that level is so dope. This is Gary V right here. Gary, Gary V. Gary V just FaceTimed me just now. Uh, so he probably knows I'm here. Um, but I want to I want to say thank you again, Wesley. My partners at Netflix, I appreciate you. To Heartbeat Productions, uh, guys, you're you're doing an amazing job. This world that we're playing in, that we're winning in, is getting doper because of all you. I value you. I love you all. Um, and to my partner, Eric Newman, who also is a producer on the show. Eric Newman is the developer, creator behind Narcos. Um, I met with Eric. I wanted him to come and and be responsible for creating a dark lens for me to be looked at through. And he did an amazing job, man. So thank you, Eric Newman. Uh, I think I've ran through my checklist of people that I just want to make sure that I acknowledge while being on here. And to the fans, man, those that have been riding with me since day one, uh, you are valued, you're appreciated, you're loved. Uh, to those that don't know and, and may become a new fan, what up? Uh, fuck with me. I'm in a new place of happy, and the world of drama is is exciting. Doesn't mean comedy is going anywhere, but I'm loving this space. And to those that don't fuck with me, uh, that's your choice. You have every right to. And I still appreciate you uh, for the opportunity of possibly fucking with me one day. That's it. That's all I got. All right. Well, it's Kevin Hart. It's Mogul. Kevin Hart. It's, it's the breakfast. <laughs> 